Hey there! Welcome back to Shinky JRPGs and welcome to my review of Cry Machina. Cry Machina is scheduled to be released on October 24th, 2023 in North America, October 27th, 2023 in Europe, Australia, and New Zealand for the PlayStation 4 and 5, Nintendo Switch, and Steam. Have you ever seen a trailer and thought, hey, this game looks amazing, followed it religiously, and as the release date creeps closer, your body shivers with excitement? As that day finally arrives, you take the game, put it in your console choice, press the power button, and look forward to have your mind absolutely blown, only to find out that the game was nowhere near as good as you expected. Cry Machina was that game for me. Just a few disclaimers. I was provided with a review copy of this game by Nice America, so I appreciate them for giving me this opportunity. In addition, I did not finish the game. I was incapable of it. I played about 10 hours of Cry Machina, and that was all I could stomach. So you could go ahead and view this as a first thoughts or the opinion of a man who has suffered immense disappointment. Before we get into the review, have you ever had a game that you were incredibly excited for only to be let down? Let me know in the comments below. Anyways, pull up a chair, grab a drink, and get ready to hear the roast, er, I mean, my opinions on Cry Machina. Alright, so the setting of Cry Machina is what drew me to it in the first place. Cry Machina takes place in a post-apocalyptic world that was initially destroyed by a pandemic. Two guesses where that idea came from. Anyways, your main heroine is Laban Destel, a girl on her deathbed. As she is about to pass away, she hears a faint voice stating, You have been chosen. 2,000 years later, Laban wakes up in an area named Eden. Enoa, an android, explains to her that this world is 2,000 years after she has died and her body was replaced by mechanics. The whole concept of this game is that mechanical girls that want to become real humans again guided by the android Enoa. This whole concept is what drew me to the game in the first place. I absolutely love post-apocalyptic settings and society and humanity being on the brink of extinction. I personally find that storyline and setting to be absolutely thrilling. However, Cry Machina doesn't do it very well. It doesn't really go into the whole post-apocalyptic setting despite it being explained in the first few minutes. Another part of the story that bothers me is how stories are delivered. Story is delivered during tea parties. That's right, actual tea parties. In between gameplay missions, you have to view two to three required tea party chats and up to 10 optional chats. Every cutscene looks exactly the same and they're just boring. Talking about what they think real humans are and how they can become real humans. Honestly, these chats are so boring. And on more than one occasion, I just found myself zoning out because the conversations weren't fun in any sense at all. What's worse is there are times when they try to go into fan service territory and it isn't even that close to fan service. Like, have you ever been sitting around drinking tea and out of nowhere you ask everyone at the table what their sexual preferences are? It seems out of nowhere and has next to no reason for being brought up. Even when doing this, the characters are so emotionless. It doesn't seem to phase them. I suppose I could tie into the whole not real humans point of view, but even then it just defeats the purpose of having the scene in the first place. If you enjoy torturing yourself, you can unlock more of these optional scenes by spending Ego, normally used to level yourself up to buy memories. Each memory corresponds to a new scene, so I guess if you really want more of those bland tea parties, go for it. Again, it really disappointed me because you can do so much with post-apocalyptic settings because that story setting is not explored all that often. Instead, Cry Machina just has a bunch of girls drinking tea and explaining their thoughts to one another. One positive I do have to say about the game, however, is that the game is very LGBTQ friendly. All of the characters are women and interested in women. It's nice that it's so inclusive, so the game isn't all that bad. I can't be negative all the time during this roast, right? The gameplay doesn't get much better than the awful story scenes. First of all, the meat of the gameplay is in boss battles. The actual stages, I use that term lately, only last about 3-5 to five minutes and then the rest is a boss battle. Not to mention, they all look identical. Again, you're in a post-apocalyptic world. Have a bit of variation. Not everything has to look like a futuristic corridor of blandness. Anyways, Cry Machina is an action RPG, but it isn't very action-y at all. You have three available characters to play, Laban, Mikoto, and Amy. However, they more or less play exactly the same. The gameplay is basic. You have a standard attack which acts as a chain combo, a stronger launcher attack that can be charged, a gun attack that can also be charged. 
In addition, you have options that somewhat resemble the pod and your automata. These two options can be equipped with different types of attacks that use various amounts of energy that rapidly increases. As for defensive options, you have an evade and the game employs a perfect dodge system that slows down time so you can get some attacks in, as well as a parry system. The parry system is what my main gripe is. Every enemy has two types of attacks, one that is denoted by a red flash, these attacks can be dodged. Then you have attacks denoted by a purple flash, these attacks must be parried. If you parry, then you can do an attack that will really drop the enemy's break gauge. The timing on the parries are just ridiculous and inconsistent. Unfortunately, dodging them while possible will ruin the flow of combat. Ideally, during the boss fights, you will mash square with occasional option attacks thrown in until you see an attack, which I will mention are very hard to see due to all of the particle effects. Dodge or parry that attack until the boss falls down, launch the enemy in the air, do a mash square air combo and then press launch again to bring the enemy to the ground, which you can then do a finisher attack. Then you start from the beginning all over again. If you decide you want to mix it up by throwing in a launch attack, mid-combo the enemy will then throw one of its parryable attacks. Keep in mind, you can't parry in mid-air, so when this attack inevitably hits you, you're losing about one half to two thirds of your health in a single hit. The gameplay just isn't fun, it's very bland and it feels terrible the whole time through. When back at Eden, other than the story scenes as I mentioned previously, you can create equipment, level up one of your three characters or increase their stats, the gameplay loop is basically 45 minutes of tea parties, 10 minutes of dungeon crawling, 5 minutes to level up and go back to more tea parties to start all over again. Bland through and through. Okay, well the story is awful, the setting is awful, the fan service is awful, and the characters are mediocre. I do like the graphics and art style. The graphics look incredibly nice. I love how the game looks in Eden. It's beautiful, it's bright, character designs are quite nice and very sophisticated. I honestly really enjoy the art style. I think it's incredibly beautiful and pleasing on the eyes. It's a shame that the game itself is so bad and really doesn't deserve to look this good. It's probably part of what led me on to being so excited for this game in the first place. Beautiful piece of garbage will still end up being garbage in the end. Horrible, stinky, long past its prime garbage. So the music. It's not offensively bad, but it doesn't stand out as amazing to me either. It wasn't very memorable. It's well suited for the environment. I enjoyed the music. I particularly enjoyed the dungeon themes and the Eden music is quite tranquil. I honestly have no complaints. Cry Machina only has a Japanese voice track, which while I prefer a game to have English voice acting, this isn't the end of the world to me. Games developed by Furyu, the developer of Cry Machina, don't usually have voice acting at all, so I'll take what I can get, I suppose. Though I personally would have liked to have an English voice cast, one thing I can say that's positive about this game, I know, you weren't expecting that were you, is the fact that Furyu did the one thing, the one thing that I wish Koei Tecmo and other companies that primarily use Japanese dubs would do. Cry Machina has subtitles for its flavor text. Little conversations between characters or battle grunts get translated into English. This is one thing that I feel should be necessary. Not suggested, necessary. If you aren't going to translate a game into English or whatever the local language is, it's a quality of life feature that can increase enjoyment tenfold. So, as I stated at the beginning of the video, I was unable to finish this game due to my lack of enjoyment for it. I can, however, talk about the pacing. The pacing is... How can I put this delicately? Ass. This game, while advertised as an action RPG, has the pacing of a visual novel. Most of the time, you'll just be watching cutscenes. Cutscene after cutscene, it feels like they never end. Then, once you're finally able to get some gameplay, it's over before you know it. I don't hate visual novels by any stretch of the imagination. After all, Rampa and Zero Escape are some of my favorite game series of all time. Take this as my recommendation for you to play them. Seriously. But anyways, back to the review. When a game is advertised as an action RPG, I expect it to be an action RPG. Not a visual novel with slight action RPG segments. This pacing is terrible, and when pacing like that is terrible, it's just another aspect that bothers me with RPGs. You need that delicate balance, and Cry Machina doesn't have that. Not even close. So as you may be able to tell, Cry Machina, so far in 2023, 
is one of the most disappointing games I've played. Would I review it more fairer if it wasn't my most hyped game of the year? Perhaps, but that ship has long since sailed away. Primachina, I feel, is just a bad game with bad mechanics and is just bad. Could you enjoy it? Maybe, but you would really have to be into the idea of mechanic humans wanting to be a real person again. That just didn't grab me, it was nothing like I expected when it was announced in 2019. I'd give the game a 3 out of 10, and even then, that's being generous. Despite my review, are you going to pick up Cry Machina? If so, tell me what you're looking forward to with it, or have you already played it? Did you like it? Does the story and gameplay get better as you go on? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. That's the meat and potatoes folks, thanks for tuning in and have a wonderful day.